Planning our very first cruise in 2016 wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be, but I've learned a lot since then. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my process when I book my own cruises and when I book cruises for my clients. So let's get started. Some of my process could be used in a different order and that's fine, but I'm going to go in a specific order for the purposes of this video. One of the first things that you want to do is choose a destination. Where do you want to go. That's an important piece of the puzzle here when you're planning a cruise. Our very first cruise was to the Caribbean because we had never been to the Caribbean. We had never been on a cruise. And so when I thought of cruising, when I thought of vacations, the Caribbean is what I thought of. So that's why our first cruise was to the Caribbean. But that being said, since we've been on so many Caribbean cruises, I'm ready to see other parts of the world. Therefore, we have our first Mediterranean cruise scheduled for June and I cannot wait. Now, one thing I always keep in mind when I plan a cruise is that I only have one day in that destination. So I want to make the most of that one day for sure. If spending one day in a specific port or destination is not for you, then cruising may not be for you. But I like it because I have the security of knowing I go back to the ship every day. I don't have to unpack. And I just have that stable environment to where I know I feel comfortable. And this is also a way that I get to learn about a destination. So if I want to go there again and spend a longer period of time on a land vacation, now at least I'm familiar with the area. So that's why I like cruising as well. I get to see a lot of destinations in a short period of time. Along with the destination, I think of when I want to go. For me and my husband, we're empty nesters now, so it doesn't matter. Like the, the sky is the limit on when we want to go. But some people don't have that flexibility like we do. So you really want to consider when you want to go. The time of year you want to go definitely comes into play with price and availability. This whole topic could be a video all on its own just to talk about the best times to travel, when's the most budget friendly, when's the least crowded. And if you want a video on that specific topic, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to make a video on that subject alone. Another thing that you want to consider is what's the length of your cruise. There are so many options, especially if you're going to the Caribbean out of a Florida port. I think that has kind of the most options of all, quite frankly, because if you're going out of a Florida port, you can go on a three night, a four night, a five night, anywhere up to maybe 14 nights or even longer. So there's a lot of flexibility when you go to the Caribbean. But if you're going to somewhere like the Mediterranean, if you're going to Alaska, if you're going on a Canadian New England cruise, there's less flexibility there. And most of those are at least seven days. So again, when I plan a cruise, I look at the length of cruise as well so I can determine what I want to do, how long I want to go, and then what destinations I can do in that period of time. Once I choose a destination and a length of cruise, then then I look at the cruise line. And these three steps happen very quickly, especially when I'm working with clients. I just ask some basic questions. But what's the vibe I'm looking for on the ship? Do I want a larger ship? Do I want a smaller ship? Each cruise line has their different personalities. So the vibe definitely varies from cruise line to cruise line and even ship to ship. For example, Royal Caribbean, Disney Cruise Line, Norwegian Cruise Line really focus on families. It's not just what they do. They definitely definitely have adult only areas. So if you want to enjoy some adult time, you definitely can do that. I personally have gone on a Disney cruise. I've gone on many Royal Caribbean cruises and I really stay in their adult only sections of the ship. But it's really nice because they really do focus on families. If I'm looking for more of an elevated kind of cruise, I probably would choose something like Celebrity. They explore modern luxury and emphasize this with stylish and modern modern decor. I love Celebrity Cruise Line because it's still at a reasonable price point. But again, it's a little bit more elevated than Royal Caribbean or Norwegian or Carnival. Celebrity has a little bit more gourmet dining and higher level amenities throughout the ship. Are families welcome on a cruise line like Celebrity? Absolutely. 
but there is a limit of pools, a limit of hot tubs. They don't have the water slides. So again, kids are certainly welcome and there's things for kids to do. But if I compare apples to apples with Royal Caribbean or celebrity for a family, I would choose Royal Caribbean. Then there's the more luxury brands like Viking or Silver Sea or Explorer Journeys. A lot of these luxury brands are a little bit more all-inclusive. So I like that because it comes at a great value for me. And then of course, I consider some of the adult only options as well, such as Viking or Virgin. So again, like I choose the cruise line based on the vibe I'm looking for in that particular vacation. I think it's important that when I choose a cruise line, I also try to remember that the cruise ships within that cruise line can vary greatly. So let's talk about Royal Caribbean for a minute. Royal Caribbean has over 27 ships and they have different classes of ships. They have the Icon class and the Oasis class and the Voyager class. And within those class, there are cruise ships and each cruise ship has a different personality. So even if I choose Royal Caribbean, then I want to choose the right ship for me. Do I want lots of amenities? Do I want lots of things to do? Do I want lots of pools and slides and activities and things like that? Or am I looking for a more laid back experience? And again, these are some things that I consider even when I'm choosing a ship within a cruise line. I remember for our first cruise, we chose Royal Caribbean for our very first cruise. But then I literally spent hours and hours determining which cruise ship we wanted to go on. I mean, I analyzed it for hours and hours by size, by amenities. We ended up choosing Navigator of the Seas and it was great for our first cruise and I loved it because it was a good mid-sized ship that had some amenities. In fact, a fair amount of amenities, but it wasn't overwhelming to me for my first cruise like the Oasis class ships which are the hugest in the industry. Cruise ships are also determined by the destination which is why you want to choose your destination first because there are specific cruise ships that only can go to certain destinations. So for instance we went on a cruise last year with Royal Caribbean and the itinerary included Aruba and Curacao. Well only specific ships go there. So even though I chose Royal Caribbean I knew I wanted to go to Aruba and Curacao so that really limited the ship choice for me. So again, it's something I remember when I'm planning my cruise. Now, once you choose your cruise line, then I choose what kind of cabin type do I want? Each cruise line has various room types available. Broadly, these cabin types are interior, ocean view, balcony, and suites. That's generally what's available on every cruise ship. Once you choose your room type, then you have to choose where you want to be on the ship. Do you want to be forward? Do you want to be aft, which means toward the back of the ship? Do you want to be midship? Those are all important decisions based on your own travel style and where you want to be on the ship. Do you want to be on a higher deck? Do you want to be on a lower deck? Personally, when I first started cruising, I like to be midship because at that point, when the ship rocks, that's where it rocks the least. So I was a little apprehensive of cruising when I first started cruising. So I'm like, I want to be midship, midway up. And that worked really well for us. Now, when I go on a cruise, I don't really care where we are on the ship, but I always want to choose a balcony. For me, I like a balcony because I like the fresh air. I like to open the sliding glass door. I like to go out and look at the scenery. I just love a balcony room, but that's just me. It's important to remember that these cabins all come at different price points. So the price point is first determined on what you choose, interior, ocean view, balcony, or suite. Once you have that, the price point also changes depending where you are on the ship. So for example, if I choose a balcony room, a midship balcony is more expensive than a balcony that's toward the front of the ship or toward the back of the ship. So again, it can be confusing, which is why I spend a lot of time studying deck plans as well. When I'm choosing the cruise that's best for me, I also look at what's included. Now, generally what's included on all cruises is food, accommodations, entertainment, activities, pools, water slides, coffee, tea, and some juices. That's all generally what's included in your cruise. When I plan a cruise, I look at the overall value. What am I getting for my money? This is a huge consideration because you're not just paying for a hotel room, you're 
you're paying for the entire experience with a cruise. Lastly, once I book the cruise and I'm all set with that, then I look at shore excursions, onboard activities, and any pre-cruise purchases I would like to make. For me, scheduling and booking shore excursions ahead of time is a great way for me to plan so I know what I'm doing in each port and I get to experience the culture or the beaches, whatever's happening in that specific port. A lot of times I book my shore excursions right through the cruise line, but there are also times when I book the shore excursions through a third party vendor. And there are a lot of third party options as well. When I book a third party option, I just want to be sure that they have a back to ship guarantee. Because if I book my shore excursion through the cruise line and if something happens, Happens. I'm on the shore excursion and the vehicle I'm in gets a flat tire and I don't get back to the ship in time. If I booked it through the cruise line, the ship will wait for me. If I didn't book it through the cruise line, then the ship will not wait. So I'm very careful when I book third party shore excursions and make sure that I know I can get back to the ship on time. Another thing I consider when I'm looking at my pre-cruise purchases is I think about if I want to purchase the drink package or not. There are some cruise lines that include the drink package, but most do not. So again, this goes back to what's included in your cruise. I made a whole video on whether you should purchase the drink package or not. My video happens to be about Royal Caribbean, but really it kind of transcends across all cruise lines and you'll get an idea if it's worth it for you or not. I'll link it here below if you want to take a look at it. Once I'm booked onto the cruise, I can log into the cruise line's passenger portal and each cruise line has one of these. I log in or I create a login depending if I've sailed with them before. And that's when I can see all the purchases I would like to make before I board the ship. I think the last thing I want to say is there's certainly a lot to consider when booking a cruise. And it's way more than I thought it would be when I tried to do this on my own the first time. I was very confused. I made some mistakes. Like for instance, we didn't purchase our drink package till we got on the ship. And it cost us a lot more money than if I had purchased it ahead of time. Time. So again, it's not just like click, book, and you're all set to go. There's a lot of things to consider. I'm sure there's some things that I've left out. And if you think I've forgotten anything, or if you have any ideas on something that you would like for me to make a video on, please leave it in the comment below and I'll consider making a video. I also created a document that includes all the cruise tips I just gave you and I'll link it below and, and feel free to click on it, it's free. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the subscribe button, click that notification bell so you know when I have another video coming out. It really helps the channel a lot and it doesn't cost you anything. If you would like to book a cruise and you want my help, just click the information in the description on the video or on my main page and you'll be able to contact me and email me. And I'll also put my email right here. I hope this video was helpful in planning your next cruise and thanks so much for watching.